Hi everyone, my name is Erin Newkirk, and I am so honored to be with you here today talking about something that is near and dear to my heart, my heart, thoughtfulness, and why thoughtfulness matters. And I hope this is a notion, and I'm sure this is a notion that is near and dear to your hearts as well. As CEO and co-founder of Red Stamp, correspondence, invitations, stationery, holiday cards is what I do and what I know. But it's more than a business choice for me, of course. I was, have always been, and continue to be passionate about making relationships stronger. Friends, colleagues, people are what make life worth living because the human spirit always fascinates, surprises, and delights. I was recently having coffee with an always friend, sometimes colleague, in this quaint little coffee shop and I was updating her on my life, my work, and in particular, this TED Talk. I shared with her that while I was thoroughly honored to be here speaking, I was a little nervous about picking a topic that would quote unquote, reveal something never seen before, do something the audience will remember forever, share an idea that would change the world. No pressure, right? <laughs> and her response, bless her heart, was to start firing off a thousand amazing ideas. In no time at all, our arms were flying, our voices were raised, we were laughing and grabbing our phones, sharing contacts and dates, grabbing pens to furiously scribble down ideas and follow-ups in our notebooks. And then, in the midst of it all, we took a breath and started to laugh. It was at that moment that I literally reached across the table, gave her a little shake, and said, Don, thank goodness I have you in my life, and thank goodness that we're sitting here right now. And we both laughed again, and she said, well, honestly, Erin, right back at you, especially right now, because I'm pulling together this amazing interior design project for this outstanding stylist, but she needs everything by next week. So who do you know, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. And we were off talking about her greatest adventure and how I could help her. As I was driving away from my coffee, I was grinning, like ear to ear grin, silly grin, uh, look at that lady in the car next to you kind of grin. I was elated. I was also totally invigorated and ready to take on the world, or at the very least, sit down and start scripting this talk. I met Don through our work, definitely, but clearly work isn't what defines our relationship. And the truth is, I have many people in my life like this. Mostly women, truthfully, but not all women, who are smart and loyal and lovely and inspiring and connected and thoughtful. And right then, right there, it hit me. This is why it's important to have mentors and advisors and collaborators. And this is why it's also important that we advise and mentor and collaborate. This is productivity. And this is why it's important to give yourself up to an idea every once in a while. Take a risk. Be open to relationships and new ideas. And this is why thoughtfulness matters. The word thoughtful is more than merely a word, of course. It's an ideal. It's an emotion. It's a habit. It's a process. Over time, when exercising daily behavior, it becomes a part of who we are and how we get things done. So it's a lens for productivity, really. It's how we answer questions and help people in need, or how we lend a hand to those who are thriving. Thoughtful is a genuine gesture intended to collaborate without expecting an immediate payback, or really any payback at all. Conversely, when asking a thoughtful question or request, it's about making sure we have something of value to offer in return. It's not greedy or created to exploit, and it's not something that's done expecting praise. Often it's done when no one's looking at all. It's positive and proactive, and it makes any space more creative and energetic. It doesn't demand perfection, but it must be nourished to flourish. Businesses are thoughtful, people are thoughtful, actions are thoughtful. According to Merriam-Webster, thoughtful has two parts, and I'm quoting here. One, absorbed in thought, meditative, characterized by careful reasoning, as in a thoughtful essay. Two, having thoughts heedful, given to or chosen or made with heedful anticipation of the needs and wants of others. Meditative and heedful, 
head and heart, yin and yang. I'm a little concerned that thoughtfulness is retreating to somewhat of an add-on, a luxury, a nice-to-have, particularly, especially in business, even though thoughtfulness is proven to get things done and do great things. And so I have to ask, are you okay with this? Because I'm not okay with this. In a day and age where we move so quickly, we forget Newton's third law of motion, and it still applies, that every action causes a reaction. And so we don't think about the very real people on the other end of ranting emails or blog posts and comments. We're programming away, making our experiences better. Tweets. We sometimes forget the helpful shoulders that we stand on belong to a human with a real head and a real heart. That we may strive for complete domination of a space, as in a niche in business, but that this space has real users with real problems and demands real answers. These needs are what will define your success, not your funding, not your platform, not your marketing, though admittedly these things do definitely help. The great news here is that there is a huge opportunity to be thoughtful, to stand out by being thoughtful, which is not only good for your soul, it's good for business. Hopefully by now I've convinced you that, you, that thoughtfulness does matter, that we should all be here today and leave here today a decidedly more thoughtful person. But how? Because in the time that you're sitting here, your inbox is filling up. You've been added to death on Twitter because you've been live tweeting. The question is, and it's a very good question, is how do we create thoughtfulness in our daily lives? Busy, hectic daily lives. So I've been asking this question, I've been asked this question a lot, especially recently as I've been preparing this talk. Because being thoughtful isn't difficult to do, but unless you're already doing it, and rock on if you are, it's something you need to decide to start doing. So embrace and dive in. It's a mental exercise as well as a physical undertaking. But the good news is we have constructs, really interesting constructs. Different paths to explore. Different practices to be more meditative and more heedful. Now when I think of meditative, the very first image that, pop, that pops into my mind is Buddha. Big Buddha. The ancient practice of Buddhism, being Zen or Zen-like, you've heard these things. Though Zen was first documented in China in the 7th century, it wasn't until the late 1950s and the early 1960s that Westerners started taking interest in this approach. Still today, there are centers dedicated to the art of Zen and teaching people meditation and relating Zen to daily life. One of those methods is the notion of being present. You've all heard of that, right? Being present, living in the present that there are only three possible time frames, the past, the present, and the future. And the real you only exists in the present moment. When you can live in the present, you are calm, your reflexes are fast, your wit is quick, you are decisive, you know what's right for you, and you perform at your best. You realize that you have limitations, but this lets you be real. And you accept that you have weaknesses, and so does everyone else around you. But you are thoughtful in your existence, in your actions. You are purposeful, you are meditative, and you are heedful. You are at your most thoughtful. There are various quotes from various sources that say that less than 1% of this nation live in the present. Of course, it's impossible to really know that this is true. But given our society and, and how we behave, I, I have a feeling it's probably pretty low, right? Even just sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going next, oh my gosh, I'm going next, I force myself to live in the present. Think about how you can incorporate this idea in your daily life, not thinking ahead, taking one thing at a time, being thoughtful about the decisions you are making while you are making them. I know this seems hard when things are insane or you have a lot on your plate, but I bet you'll be surprised at the answers that you'll find when you actually look at the present to help answer them. You have the power to take that foreseen blow, or what you perceive to be the foreseen blow, and turn it into a joy in the form of an idea, an opportunity, a win. Because if you follow the principles of Buddhism, your reflexes are fast, your wit is quick, you are decisive, you know what's right for you, your confidence is deep, and this lets you be real, thoughtful. Great, you say, but I read blogs and books about how the right thing is to move fast, lightning fast, that time is money. Yes, agreed, I hear you. I read those books too, 
And I subscribe to Seed. After all, I work for a tech startup. <laughs> Where we spread for weekly releases and though not proudly, daily deployments. Where what we, we compare what we do to downhill skiing, where it's rough and it's fast and you just gotta go. Fast is good, fast is king. And I believe in fast, I subscribe to fast. But please do not confuse thoughtfulness with slow. Thoughtfulness is right. Another point I will make on speed is that in this push for lightning quick society, there is an interesting and compelling movement going on that you probably have heard on Praises the Slow. It's called the Slow Movement. It's happening in food, sourcing fresh local foods and sustainable farming. It's happening in art, with knitting, painting, music, medicine, but it's also happening in tech. Yes, tech, right? It seems like the wrong place for that to happen. But there's a well-known, award-winning Canadian journalist named Carl Honoré, who wrote an interesting book called In the Praise of Slowness, and it's an excellent book. The idea, as explained by Honoré, is, quote, that we should attempt to integrate the advances of the information age into a lifestyle that is marked by an inner slowness that gives more depth to relationships with others and with oneself, end quote. He writes about finding happiness and deaccelerating, finding the right speed, caring less about how many friends you have on Facebook, but making sure that you're focusing on developing meaningful friendships and connections even if it's just one person. Facebook is an interesting landscape, right? And while we're at it, we can add Twitter to the list. Plus, there's lots of other social media. It's exciting. I use it. I love it. Never have we been so connected with so many people. You have your real life friends, you have your virtual friends, you have celebrities, news sources. In theory, we have never been so connected. With more and more ways to communicate, our social circles are literally exploding rapidly. International is no longer a boundary in real-time information. We are more informed, receiving updates literally every second. Yet, it's becoming increasingly more difficult to communicate because we are having a harder time extracting what's important and structuring what we want to say in the way that we want to say it. As you might imagine, this is something that I'm pretty passionate about. As we start to use more vehicles to express our sentiments, the natural tendency is to shorten the message, literally in the form of Twitter, with less emphasis on how the message is received. More thought having to go into the creation, less thought about how it comes out. It's really a matter of survival when you think about it. With multiple inboxes, we are switching from one stream of information to another rapidly to make sure that we are keeping on top of everything. But here's my question to you. How should we define everything? I think most people think of everything in terms of breadth, as in checking off everything on your never-ending to-do list or making sure that you respond to everything in your inbox. Conversely, if you think of everything in terms of depth, like only responding to one email, but responding to that email like it's the last email on this planet will drive you a little bit crazy. But what about thinking about everything in terms of how much depth you can build into breath? In other words, how can you make the most out of every single touch point? Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary Vee, has a new book coming out in March called The Thank You Economy. How many of you are familiar with Gary Vee? Yeah, a lot of people, right? <laughs> He's a pretty well-known guy. Gary is the author of Crush It, a well-known wine and social media expert. He founded Wine Library TV, hosts a daily webcast called The Thunder Show that attracts 90,000 viewers every single day. He's a self-described lover of people, and his voracious appetite for communication has made him somewhat of a sensation. His message in this book, quote, surviving and thriving today takes more than just hard work. It takes a heartfelt thanks to everyone who's made it possible. So ah, saying thanks, the thank you note. Surely a thoughtful sentiment, wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Uh, and I think that most people would agree that there is a place for thank yous in business. Yet, when most people think of thank yous, they think of a handwritten note or a typed email. But the beautiful thing about a thank you is it can be executed in so many different ways. Sure, a note, a text, a phone call, but also consider a handshake, a photo, a gift, a referral, taking a meeting, really listening, 
and saying yes to helping someone. All ways of saying thank you, that you are appreciative of them. What's interesting is that some of these actions take place without actually saying the word thank you, but the thank you is implied because it's intended. It's interesting but not surprising that I often hear from clients, friends, family, that the world is moving too quickly for thank yous, that there isn't enough time to actually say the word thank you, because some days it feels as though the world is a little out of control, has a mind of its own, and we don't really have control on how things are going down that particular day. But what if being thoughtful didn't actually take any additional time? What if it wasn't an additional task, an additional email, an additional meeting? Or what if being thoughtful, meditative, or heedful, and by not being thoughtful, you are somehow slacking on urgent, serious matters in your life that need your immediate attention? I'm not quite sure when in life we moved away from the idea that being thoughtful isn't serious and that it isn't productive. Of course, there are books and industries catering to the rules of being thoughtful, institutes that discuss and create rules for good behavior, companies, full disclosure, like mine, that supply you with the tools and or knowledge to help you be more thoughtful. Miss Manners, Emily Post, Letitia Baldridge, they've all weighed in on everything from forks to stationery to dress code. So it goes way back when, in the late 1700s, etiquette was introduced to give people a set of rules to follow, a playbook to define good behavior and create comfort and mutual respect. But along the way, etiquette developed a bad rap as something that only the rich or the snobby had the wherewithal to subscribe to, mostly because they were the only ones, they were the only ones that had the wherewithal in the, to uh, subscribe to the accoutrements. Sorry, technology, gotta love it, right? <laughs> but I ask you, instead of looking at etiquette in the traditional way that we think about etiquette, to look at it in the terms of modern etiquette. It's different. Like society, it's evolved into a useful set of social gestures, not rules, that make it easier to be thoughtful. The considerations are simple. Be gracious. Channel your kindness. Personal and true. Give more than you receive. Be timely. The quicker you are to say thank you, the more happy that the giver will be. Be relevant. Consider your audience. Edit, edit, edit. So what if thoughtfulness really was that easy, applicable to any situation by attaching a lens versus creating tasks? How much better would it be if our businesses and lives if we pledge to slow down just enough to think in the present, control our destiny by what's happening now versus what might happen in the future. So I ask you, be gracious, be timely, be relevant. Live in the present, move at the right speed, think, give, 